Hello, my name is Bruce White and I'm the Director of Scanning Solutions for USCAD. I'll be showing a real project for capturing current conditions for an existing space in the basement of a building for a renovation project that includes the mechanical systems using the Leica RTC360 laser scanner. The space measures approximately 89 feet by 42 feet in size and I did the field work in approximately 17 minutes for seven setups. After the field work was complete, I imported the data into Leica's Register360 registration software and then sent it to our modeling team who turned it into a Revit model. The first image shown is the base architectural layout. Then we have all MEP, conduit, HVAC, followed by piping. The finished Revit mechanical model looks like this. And if we turn on part of the structural model and zoom in, you can see the detail that the team provided. Before we get started with capturing data, let's just take a moment to cover the few of the things that make the RTC360 so revolutionary. The scanner collects 2 million points per second, has a 130 meter range, does a medium scan in 1 minute 51 seconds, and that includes 5 bracket HDR photos. It is IP54 with a fully enclosed mirror, so that means it can work in the rain, snow, or dust. It does an incredibly good job at collecting data on shiny objects. It even has two-pass noise removal. What this means is that the scanner will scan a setup twice, and if there are points that don't exist in both point clouds, the software will remove them. There will be no more cars or people getting recorded in your setups if you activate this feature. It also has a GPS altimeter, compass, and IMU. It produces the cleanest and tightest data that I have seen. All of these features are great improvements, but somewhat evolutionary. The revolutionary part of the RTC360 is the VIZ tracking system. That stands for Visual Inertial System, and what it does is actually track the scanner's location in real time. This system allows truly automatic registration in the field in real time. The whole purpose of registration is to identify the coordinates of where the scanner is located for each scan. You can pick the scanner up from one location, move it to the next, and the moment you set it down, it already knows its coordinates through the calculations of the VIZ tracking system. So therefore, the registration is already done. Since this system is so important, let's take a minute to show exactly how it works because it is truly unique. Here you can see that this system actually uses five cameras along with the IMU to track its movement. There are four cameras at each corner and one camera that points up. We will start by showing the scanner and its point cloud. The VIZ system will identify unique points in the image and map that to the point cloud. This provides the coordinates. As we pick up and move the scanner, it is tracking its movement in relationship to these points. It will also start tracking new points that come into view. While the video itself isn't saved, the video that I'm about to show is an example of what the scanner sees as it moves and how it tracks its location in relationship to those points. The four views on the left are from the four scanners on the scanner's corners. The upper right is the camera that faces up and the bottom right view is the forward facing camera. This is the process that's used. Let's watch it in real time. Pick up the scanner and walk to the next setup. It's tracking outside now, but we're going to walk inside and it continues tracking without a problem. Let's go back outside. Here's the next setup location, and the scanner already knows exactly where it is, and the registration is effectively done. Isn't that incredible? Think of all the office time that you'll save without having to register. Okay, now that we covered all of that, let's get on with the fieldwork and see it in action. 
Arriving on site, you'll see that everything is in one backpack. I have started a timer in the corner of the screen. I'll set up the lightweight tripod first. Remove and mount the scanner and install the batteries. I'll now install one of the two 256 gigabyte high speed USB storage sticks. Next, we open up Field 360 on the iPad Pro and we'll create a new job called Basement. We can then snap a photo as an icon for the job. Then we click on the job that we just created. We are then going to select the leftmost icon to start a scan. From there you have four icons. The first is the density of the scan where you can select low, medium, or high. The next is photos on or off. We would like them on. The third icon determines whether the scanner uses the two-pass scanning. And the last is the Viz system, which we definitely want on. The scanner has started the first scan. It will scan the entire view 360 degrees horizontally and 300 degrees vertically. There will only be a small circle underneath the tripod that is not collected. In addition to collecting all the point data, the scanner will also collect 360 degree high resolution photos using the five bracket HDR cameras. HDR stands for high dynamic range. This means the scanner will take a normal photo, two different overexposed photos, and two different underexposed photos. This allows us to see in shadow and in bright light. Regardless of the lighting conditions, the photos always take one minute. The RTC360 has three cameras that it uses to collect the photos, in addition to the five video cameras that we discussed for the Viz system. One points up, one points forward, and one points down. I will allow the scanner to run in real time without speeding up the video on this setup so that you can feel how quickly the scanner actually collects data. The scanner communicates with the iPad via a Wi-Fi signal. As I said before, the data is very clean with little to no noise. The distance error on the scanner is half a millimeter at a range of 20 meters. You may notice that there's a progress bar that shows you the status at the extreme bottom of field 360 on the iPad. We are just about done with this setup, and what you'll notice is that the scan data pops into the iPad within seven seconds of completion. It is a lightweight version of the point cloud, but we can view the photos and rotate in 3D, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. The first scan is now done and the data has been transferred to the iPad. I'll pick up the scanner and move it to the next setup. By the way, I'm actually using low resolution on this job, which is 1 minute 26 seconds and has a resolution of 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters at 10 meters distance.
We can review this data, but first, let's get the second scan started. Let's take a look at the 360 degree photos. We can adjust the lighting because the photos are HDR and we can really bring out the details because we have five bracket HDR. Here we can see my cameraman, Sean, helping out. Thanks, Sean. A few more data points about this scanner is that it's a light 11 pounds and has an operating temperature of minus 5 degrees to positive 40 degrees Celsius. Although I do know some folks that were testing the RTC 360 units in the polar vortex last winter at minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit and it was running fine. We can look at the 3D point cloud and spin it around to check coverage, although keep in mind that this is only a fraction of the millions of points that we've already collected. The second scan is just finishing now, and this is where you can see the brilliance of the Viz system. The scan will pop onto the iPad in the right place with the right orientation completely automatically. This is because the Viz system tracked the location change between Setup 1 and Setup 2. I will move the scanner to the third setup and press Start. For the sake of time, I will fast forward to the end of the scan while also accelerating the timer. While it is fast forwarding, I will create a link between the setups on the iPad. While I move to the next setup, the third scan is displayed in exactly the right place again. I will fast forward through this scan also. The fourth scan is complete and also displays in the correct location. I will fast forward the rest of the way through three more setups for a total of seven in all. We are all done. 16 minutes, 47 seconds for seven setups, completely capturing the as-built conditions, including all mechanical. We will pack up and then transfer the data to the computer. Now that the field work is done, let's process the data. Leica's Register 360 is the best choice for the RTC 360. First of all, we're going to create a new project in Register 360.
We'll drag and drop the data. I will select only the first project import, and since the data is basically registered, there's no need to have it look for cloud-to-cloud -cloud matches or targets. The data is imported. All we have to do is add a few constraints to create a good network. This constraint will create a closed loop, critical for a good adjustment. This will provide a good cross constraint. Since the data is basically in place already, to add additional constraints, I just select the two setups, hit the letter V for visual alignment, then J for join, will best fit the constraint from there. Now I will adjust the entire network. Let's take a look at the photos from one of the setups and turn on the HDR image. Here you can see that you can see in the shadows and that Register360 adjusts the exposure as needed. Let's do some QAQC with TrueSlicer. TrueSlicer will turn each setup a different color and let us slice through the point cloud horizontally and vertically as a double check to make sure that the setups align. I will adjust the rotation of the project so that it's square to the screen. I'm just making sure that all the scans are lining up properly horizontally and I'll shut off all the stations and links for clarity. Look at how nice that piping is. I can adjust both the width and the placement of the slice in the X, Y, or Z planes. I'm just making sure that everything aligns well both horizontally and vertically. You should always do a double check QAQC. All the setups align really well, so now we'll head over to finalize our data. We hit accept after we position the screen for the view that we would like on the top of our report. Another accept to agree to the network error residuals, which brings up a very nice PDF report. This report shows our overall errors and then each and every constraint. It's a very nice report. We can select the Publish tab where we can create whatever output format that we would like, such as E57, LGS, etc. All we have to do now is select the Publish button and our project is ready to go to the modeling team. I have other videos that cover the modeling aspect if you're interested in seeing that process, but that is a bit out of scope of this video. 
In less than 17 minutes, I arrived on site and completely scanned the existing conditions with enough detail for the modelers to create an entire Revit model. Each of the scans were registered automatically by the Viz system. In all of my testing and usage, the RTC 360 does a fantastic job of tracking the location of its scans and putting them in the right place, saving hundreds or thousands of hours of office work and registration. Please keep in mind that this is truly an automatic registration, not a pattern recognition algorithm after the fact that requires a bunch of processing and may or may not align on its own. The registration is done real time in the field and verified in the field. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment, call or connect on LinkedIn, share or like the video, and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.